Hey y'all, let's take a look at a couple of things here. We're gonna start off with what's called the trichotomy axiom, which sounds like some kind of a you know, disease you get in the Amazon jungle or something, I don't know. But it, trichotomy, tri is three. An axiom is a theory or you know a mathematical, uh, I guess some kind of a theory. But anyway, this is what it is. It's a piece of cake. For any two real numbers, A and B, exactly one of the following is true. So either A is equal to B, or A is greater than B, or A is less than B, of course. Now, if we can eliminate two of these, and we can say, oh, we know that A is not uh, greater than B, and we know it's not equal to B, then we can conclude that it has to be less than B. Or if we can conclude, oh, A is not less than B, and it's not equal to B, then it must be greater than B, okay? So we're gonna set up these kind of problems for you like this, and they're called negated inequalities, which means it's an inequality, and they say it's not that. So look at this box. Graph the solution of x is not, there's the you know, sign, not greater than or equal to seven. Well, if it's not greater than or equal to seven, then that must mean that it's less than seven, right? Okay, we know how to do that. So again, and when you're doing these problems, don't make this long, complicated graph. Just go like this. Go x is less than 7. There's my 7. Open circle because it doesn't include 7. There you go. Go to the next problem. Boom. So it's nice to have a couple of problems in sex where you can just zing it out really quickly, okay? If x is not less than 4, well then x must be greater than 4 and also equal to 4, right? If it's not less than it can be the other two things. So if x is greater than or equal to four, then very quickly, boom, there's your four. It includes the equal, so you fill in the, the uh, circle and then greater than. All right, how about this one? Let's go backwards. Um, give me an inequality and a negated inequality that describes this graph. Well, we can go ahead and just do the x, and we can go ahead and do the three, right? Let's do that first one. Well, we know that x is, everything's going to be less than, right? Okay. Now, does it include 3? No. As an open circle. So there's your regular inequality. The negated inequality is this. It's not, and then it'll be greater than or equal to 3. So that's your negated inequality. And that's pretty much it. Piece of cake. So there you go. All right. Let's look at what's called advanced ratio problems next. Oh, there's that terrible word again. I don't know. Sometimes these proofreaders in these books just have a terrible problem. Let's see. Bag of frosting. That's too long. Puzzles is good enough. Okay, there we go. Puzzle. Advanced ratio puzzles. Okay. Here's my question to you. Forget anything right now except for this. If the ratio of boys to girls in a class is 2 to 3, so there's two boys for every three girls in the class. Does that prove that there are exactly five students in the class? And what's the answer? No, right? I mean, there could be two, bo uh, two boys and three girls, right? Which would give you, obviously, a ratio of two or three. But there could also be uh, 20 boys and 30 girls, right? Which means you could have 50 students. Or there could be, uh, you know, 98 uh, boys and 147 girls, that's a two to three ratio, because 49 goes into 98 two times, and 49 goes into 147 three times, so it's the same thing. So uh, that doesn't prove that there are five boys and girls in the class. That's key to remember in these ratio problems we're gonna do today. Okay, and let's look at this. Uh, the ratio of red marbles to blue marbles in a box is five to seven. Can you visualize that? So red to blue is five to seven. It could be five um, reds and it could be seven blues, right? But they tell us no. There are 156 marbles total. Well, how many marbles are red? Okay, that's a different problem. The ratios will be the same, but the number of red marbles is not going to be five and then, oh, there are seven blue marbles. It's gonna be bigger than that because you can see how there are a lot more marbles than five plus seven, 12 marbles, right? So I want you to write these down. You'll have some good steps for you on how to solve these problems. There's an absolute method. I've really condensed it down from the Saxon book, and here it is, okay? So if you want to, pause and write each one of these steps down. Number one, add the ratio numbers to get a total number, total number. 
In this case, we would say there's five red, seven blue, that'll be 12, our total number. We know there's not 12, or there are not 12 marbles in this box. There's a, there are 156 marbles. But we're gonna use that 12 for something I'll show you in just a minute. Number two, you're gonna write three equations with the three numbers. So go ahead and pause and copy that down. Okay. Second, we'll, we'll talk about those in a second. Or excuse me, third is figure out which equation to use. Figure out which equations to use, or which equation to use. Now we've done these ratio problems before, where we, you know, had ratio of, you know, remember the wedding cake, raisins to bacon, and this and that. We've done this before. This is just slightly different and a little extra to it. Last step is write a ratio equals ratio equation. Again, just like we did in the wedding cake, bacon, raisins, peanuts, and what was it, tomatoes or something like that. Anyway, okay. All right. So let's actually go ahead and do this, all right? So let's go back. Number one, add the ratio numbers to get a total number. Okay, well let's just say the total number is gonna be 12, right? Five plus seven is 12. It is possible, if we didn't know there were 156 marbles, there could be 12 marbles in the box, right? Because the ratio of red to blue would be five to seven. Five plus seven is 12, boom, 12 marbles. Could be, but there aren't, because we see that there are many, more than that, okay? Number two, write three equations with the three numbers. Okay, well let's do this. Three equations, well, what I should have said were ratios. Uh, well, we can, we can do that in a second, but the three numbers. All right, so we're gonna go, um, there are three of these. So ratios would be red to, let's go red to blue, red to blue. The red to blue is five to seven, okay? All right, that's the first one. The second one, the red to the total is gonna be five to what, you tell me? Red, there are five, total would be 12, right? No, we're not saying there are 12 marbles, but that's the ratio, okay? The other one would be blue marbles to total would be red to blue is five to seven, so the blue represents seven out of the 12. Those, those are your three equations, all right? Good? Okay, let's go to the next one. Figure out which equation to use. Well, they're asking us how many of them are red. Well, they gave us this number for the total, and we're asking for the red, so we need this. The equation we're going to use is the one with the red and with the total. Okay, so this one has the red and the total right there. All right, so we'll go red to total is five to twelve. Now look at step four. Write a ratio equals ratio equation. Well, we've already got it. Let's just fill in the blanks here. Red to total equals 5 to 12. Well, we've already got the 5 to 12. We'll just copy that down. Now let's go over here. They're asking us how many marbles are red, which means we're not going to know which one's red. But the total, we know. There's are 156 actually sitting there. So that is our setup. So red to total is 5 to 12, which it is. And red, which we don't know how many there actually are, to the total, we do know how many marbles there actually are, there's 156. Okay? So that's our ratio. Now we just cross multiply, right? 12 times R equals 5 times 156. That's going to be 780. All right? Okay, and we divide by 12. Divide by 12. 78 divided by 12 is 6. 12 times 6 is 72, which means there are 6 left over, drop to 0, and 60 divided by 12 is 5. So there we go. So there are 65 red marbles and 91 blue marbles. We don't care about that. All they want to know is how many are red. Okay, let's try the method again. Oops, I just didn't, I forgot to do our method here. But anyway, okay, let's try another one. The ratio of heavy metal albums to headaches was 13 to 4. If there were 119 albums and headaches combined, combined, how many albums were there? Okay, so we're looking for albums, all right? So we need to, let's go back and follow our steps here. The total number is gonna be what? If you have albums to headaches is 13 to four, so your total number will be, oops, there's my, 17, right? The total will be 13 plus four, that's the total. All right, so let's go ahead and write three easy equations. All right, so we'll go, let's see, heavy metal albums is 13 to four. So like the album is the 13 and the headaches is the four. So we'll go albums to headaches, that's gonna be 13 to four, we know that, right? Okay, we can go albums to total, 
is 13 to what, you tell me? 17, right? All right, and the last ratio would be headaches to total, right? Four to 17. They're asking us, they give us 119 albums, that's the actual total total, and they're asking headaches, uh, excuse me, that's albums and headaches combined. How many albums were there? So this, the combination, that's the total total. They're asking how many albums were there? So we're looking for something that tells us the total, and we're looking for the albums as well. And again, it's going to be this one right here, albums to total. All right, so we'll just fill in the blanks here. We know the right, already 13 over 17. Okay, the total, 119 albums and headaches combined, well, that's the total. That'll be down here at 119. How many albums were there? We don't know. That's what we're asking. And there we go. That's your setup. So we can go 17 times A is equal to 119 times 13. That'll be 1547. Okay? And we just do long division at this point. Divide by 17. Divide by 17. Okay? And the answer to this is 91, if you do the long division there. And there we go. Okay. All right, let's try the practice set. We'll try two of these, or actually more than that. So go ahead and try A, and uh, set it up using those four steps, and then figure out what you need to do, and then give it a, give it a shot, and then unpause it, or unpause it when you're finished. So go ahead and hit pause. Okay, well, the team played 65 games. The ratio of wins to losses was 3 to 2. How many games did the team win? Well, let's write our three equations. We got wins to losses is 3 to 2. So they won 3, you know, they won, you know, 50% more than they lost. All right, let's go wins to total, and we'll go losses to total. Those are the three ratios that we need to figure out, those three equations. Well, wins to total... Was gonna, is gonna be three to what? If you have a win to loss ratio of three to two, you have your total, I'll put that in quotes, is five, right? So if your number of wins was three out of five, like 60% of how many there were, the loss to the total is two out of five. You with me on that? Does that make sense? Okay. How many games did the team win? So we know they take a total, that's the real total right there, and we're looking for wins, which means we're gonna go for this one wins to total. All right. We know the right side is three-fifths. Wins to total. We know the actual real total amount is 65. We don't, add, we don't know how many they won, so they're asking us that. Okay. And let's take a look here. So we have 5 times W is 5W. 3 times 65 is 195. And we just divide by 5. And there we go. And wins are going to be 39 wins. Okay. There we go. All right. Go ahead and pause it and try B. Okay, let's look at our total here. I'll put that in quotes. It's going to be 23 plus 7, so that's going to be 30. All right, so we have hard problems, we have easy problems, we have a total number of problems was 930. Okay, so let's do this. There's our three ratios. Hard to easy is going to be 23 to 7, so that's a pretty easy one. Now we need easy to total, and that's going to be, you know what, let's, actually let's do hard to total first, that's a bigger number. Okay, hard to total would be 23 out of 30, all right? Easy to total would be seven out of 30. We good on those? Okay. They are asking us, let's see, the total number of problems is 930. So we have total here, and they're asking about the easy one. So we need something with easy and total, and there it is. That's what we need right here. So let's copy this down here and go, all right, 7 over 30. The total down here we know, total number of problems is 930, so we'll go 930. And how many easy? Well, we don't know. It's going to be that, E, okay. Well, let's give it a, a shot here. 30 times E is going to be 7 times 93. Okay, well, 7 times 93 is going to be 651 and then an extra zero there. All right, now we can chop off a zero here and a zero there. So it gives us an equation 3E is 651. In other words, I just divided by 10. 
All right, let's divide by 3. So e is equal to 6 divided by 3 is 2. That goes perfectly. 5 divided by 3 is 1. There's 2 left over, so 21. And uh, 3 divided and then 21 is 7. And there you go. Okay, that's your ratio stuff. Okay, hope those did well. All right, let's go ahead and draw a number line here. Um, draw yourself a really easy one. Pause it and take about 30 seconds to do this, all right? Okay. And I believe that should have had a, a not, not sign to it there, I believe, right? Yeah, okay, it should have a not sign. So if we know that x is not greater than or equal to 2, that means x is less than 2. So you go like this, boom, boom, two, less than two, open circle, there we go. Don't even try to make it perfect, get it done, get it out of there and go to the next problem, okay? Pause it and try a D now. All right, well, let's do both of these. Okay, so X and we got a negative one, and we'll do another one, X and a negative one. Okay, so we know that X is going to equal negative one because it's closed and it's gonna be greater than. So X will be greater than and equal to negative one, that's our first one. The negative inequality means that x less than, it will not be less than negative one. So that takes care of both of them, okay. All right, keep that, and again, make sure, last thing is make sure you're still doing your notes like this, where you have your notebook paper, and uh, what lesson is this, number 38, 39? Make sure you're doing something like this, 39. So if in case you run into these problems or ratios, you have those four steps, boom, 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 in your examples to help you do those for the future. So, all right, I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.